beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to start with some great hymns. There is power in the blood.
Amen. Shall we join our hearts in prayer? Almighty Lord, we thank you for that hope in our lives, Lord, that glorious hope that you're there for that, waiting for us, Lord. Help us to draw closer to you in this service, and as we, as we share our so in song and word and, and fellowship together here today, help us to honor and glorify and lift you up in the highest, and we'll give you the praise and glory. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's great to see all your smiling faces. That's your... Jackie, that's your cue to smile. Okay, very good. I got it. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. And you can sit down, too. That's great. Just welcome all visitors and guests and everybody that's here today. It's great to have friends and family from, uh, from around the country here. That's great. Um, so, it, and it's great to celebrate in the house of the Lord. You know, we studied in Sunday school. If you haven't been out to Sunday school, you want to get there because it's amazing. Get in those small groups and you learn a little bit more. We're, talking, we're studying about King Solomon and that wisdom that he had. Oh, to have the wisdom that God gave King Solomon. That's what he prayed for, right? And, and it's, it's so neat to be able to, to love God and to serve a God that loves us so much and cares for us. And isn't that something? It's amazing. So in the way of announcements, Dana is going to come up, our Sunday school leader, and uh, give us some notes. Nice shirt, too. All right. Good job. Michael likes my shirt. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, children quizzer, stand up a second. Very important information for you. Tomorrow, or tonight, lesson seven. Then pay attention because we're going to switch from Sunday night to Wednesday night. So this week, you will have quizzing also on Wednesday night, and it'll be lesson eight. So a busy week for you, okay? Uh, and why we're switching is we're starting to get ready. We're going to start practice next Sunday night for the Christmas musical. It's called an out-of-the-box uh, Christmas. Uh, today, during junior church with the older ones, teens that want to be part of it are welcome to come back for that also. We're going to watch a YouTube version of it, and we'll just start working on it from there. Also, a couple other things. For those that have seen in the bulletin, we were asking for a volunteer to show up at Northwestern Elementary at 3 o'clock so we could have Kids Club. Not only did we have one person volunteer, but we had three volunteers, so thank you. Uh, what we need, though, is we need people that will commit and come and help. Uh, from It runs from 3.30 to 5.00. So we need helpers, we need people that security, just to make sure no kids get outdoors, make sure they're signed out, that kind of thing. We just received approval this week for Kids Club. It'll start November 9th, I believe is the date. It'll run November 9th the following week, then we'll take Thanksgiving off and we'll come back for two more weeks. Uh, another opportunity that has come by way of Springfield Elementary, uh, Tanya shared with Pastor, we brought it before the board. Uh, they have a grant that was written for children that go home uh, over the weekend with not enough food in their home. Uh, is, if you think of that, to think of sending kids home on Friday night and not having any food. This grant has been written. There was another church that was doing it last year. They're unable to do it this year. We have uh, decided that we're going to do it. We've had some vo volunteers already step up. Uh, but Tanya said it's about 100 of the children that go home with food on the weekend, and that's about half of their population at their school. So it, there's a big need. So what we'll need is packers. We'll need people to run to the second food harvest bank. We need plastic grocery bags. So if you have a pile at home, bring them in because that's what we send them home with the food each week. Uh, if you take 100, some of them have to be double bagged because some of the stuff is heavy. So we're going to need lots of bags. So please, please, please save your plastic grocery bags and bring them in. Uh, also, let Tanya, Pastor, or myself know if, uh, if you're able to help out in any way with that. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Um, continuing, you can look in the bulletin and see some of the things that are coming up. Our regular services this evening, like to invite you all out that for small group and then quizzing, as Dana said, and we ch recharge on Wednesday. Um, and if you look down through there, next Saturday is a big day, going to be a fun day. So check on your calendar. Next Saturday, teens, we got a trip going to the um, to the 
pumpkin packs, corn maize next Saturday for all the teens. So make a note of that if you'd like to, to go for that. And if you've got some young people that aren't here, look around and make sure they know about that. And then in the evening, we're going to have a game night. So we're going to have play your favorite game and have a potluck dinner. So we'll have some fun time. Next Saturday is going to be a fun day. Um, you kind of see that, what's coming up. The other thing, on October 29th, our missionary leader, Judy, reminded me that um, 29th is going to be our Christmas Operation Christmas Child packing party, okay? So we still need toothpaste. So if anybody, she happened to even checking out the ads, and she says, um, it's 79 cents at Giant Eagle this week. So if you, if you can pick up some tubes of toothpaste to put in the boxes, that's what I, one of the missing gaps that we need. So um, it'll be on the 29th, a couple Saturdays from now. So make a note of that. That'll be some good things to do there. Okay. At this time, we'll have the ushers come for the morning ties and offerings. Aren't these decorations beautiful, too, from leftover, leftover decorations from the wedding? This is very nice. All the hard work that went into it. Thanks, guys. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we uh, again thank you for your love and how be such a giving and generous Lord. We thank you. Um, we pray that this offering be used, Lord, to, to continue your ministries here in our own church through missions giving around the world. Bless all that give, Lord, and help this, this offering reach those that are in need and, and spreading your word. And we'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Well, we're blessed to have uh, lots of the Henry, Henley clan with us today, uh, following the uh, Shannon and Shane's wedding yesterday. And part of that family is uh, Dan and Kavika, and they both are instrumentalists and singers, and they're going to share with us now and then again before the message.
Amen. The Holy Spirit is here this morning. Amen. Amen. We have a few that you'll know. Seek ye first. And there's some other ones that we're just familiar with today. So please sing out if you know them. Let's continue to praise him this morning.
As we remain standing for prayer this morning, we're going to, I've been asked to anoint uh, uh, yeah, Joel. My mind just went blank. Uh, that happens all too often. But uh, Joel Rumberger has uh, juvenile diabetes and they've had been having a really hard time keeping it down where it needs to be. He's wearing a monitor on him now and uh, he's going through it like a trooper, but uh, we definitely need the Lord to touch him and help us to get this under control uh, better than what it is right now. So if that family would come and Jackie. Oh, okay. Okay. Jackie's son, Sean. A uh, fairly young man uh, has had a second heart attack and has a calf scheduled for tomorrow, so keep him in prayer. Uh, if you'd like to come and pray for Joel this morning, I think that'd be great. If, if you understand diabetes, you might especially want to come, or you just care about the little children, and uh, what a privilege to take them to Jesus if you have another need this morning that you would like to represent at the altar, I encourage you to come and do that. Our dearest Heavenly Father, how wonderful to be in your house to lift your name up on high, to be reminded of how much you love us, and to get a little practice in for heaven as we worship you. We thank you, as I often do, for the privilege of being able to come to you in prayer, the creator of this universe, and that you understand us. You, you know us better than we know ourselves. You knew us before we were knit together in our mother's womb, you, dear Heavenly Father, still love us, even though you know us. And you love us more than sometimes we succeed at loving ourselves. And we thank you. We thank you because you bring healing to us. Many of us have various scars from the past in our lives, things that have hurt us, people who have hurt us, and and we bring those to you and we lay them at your cross and say, Lord, help me with this. Lord, bring healing into my life that I might be able to lift you up to others and, and to be a good, pure witness for you. Dear Heavenly Father, if there's anything in our life right now that is more important to us than you, may we sacrifice it on the altar. May we give it to you and allow you to be truly the Lord of our life in, in word, in action, in deed, in everything that we do, not just in word alone, but in our actions, in our choices. As we've been preaching about our choices these last few weeks, we pray that you will 
just help us to make godly choices. And today, as we learn to make the uh, important, choose the important over that which appears to be so urgent, we pray that you will especially be with Joel, dear Lord. And we anoint him this morning. We anoint Joel this morning in faith, believing that you are able to heal. And dear Heavenly Father, I anoint him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you, Lord, for him, for his family, for his brother, for his mom, his grandparents. And we just lay our hands on him as we're told in the book of James that we are to do. Call together the elders of the church, anoint with oil, and pray for healing. And Lord, we pray that your will might be done. We know that you have all power, that you are the great physician, and we place him in your hands and say, God, would you take care of this little guy? We've grown to love him and, and appreciate him and his brother and his family, and just pray that you will be with him, Lord, and help him in every way, and be with his family, and and give them the strength and encouragement that they need, dear Lord. And uh, we just thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. We shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone Thank you. That one was a new one to me. The first one I know, but the second one, that's great, great message. Children, you are dismissed, and uh, teens that want to be involved in the children's Christmas program or the youth Christmas program are also welcome to, uh, to be dismissed. And that leaves a few of us here, quite a few actually. Uh, Sandy just told me that uh, I knew Gail, I heard her saying she didn't feel well and was leaving, but she's in such pain apparently that uh, she's on her way to the emergency room, uh, Gail Gomer. so pray for her as well. In fact, let's just say a word of prayer for her right now, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, it's always good to call on your name, and we thank you that you were with last night when... Uh, Derek's grandmother went into emergency surgery at Hammett, and you saw her through that well. And now we pray that you'll be with Gail, that they might find what the problem is and get her all taken care of. In your name I pray, amen. Who we are today is largely a matter of the choices that we have made to this point in our life, and who we're going to be in the future also depends on the choices that we are making right now. Yes, choices do matter. For the last three weeks, we've been talking about spe specific choices that we have made or that we need to be making. Uh, let's use the video now to introduce us to today's topic. If he's not gonna play the piano, then tell him to get out of the recital. You know what I mean? Hold on one sec. Yeah, buddy, I gotta make this quick. Then may I recommend the instant demands? They're flash fried. Yeah, 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 I don't need the recipe. Just get it out here with a side of frazzled nerves and bring the check while you're at it. Absolutely. I needed the reports like yesterday. Hey, buddy, can you replace this one with one that's burnt above him? Thank you. What did I say? Uh, I've gotta work late tonight, honey. fun to go to dinner with. <laughs> How many of you today would say, honestly, sometimes you wished that there was more time to do something that was really important to you? You wish there was more time to do something that was really important. Most of us would. You would say, if like most of us, yes, but I've got the yard to mow and the dishes to do and the chores to complete and I have a work project and I have bills to pay 
and I have kids to raise, so I just don't have the time to get to that important thing. Often when we ask one another, so how are you doing? Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I'm busy. I'm so busy. Oh, my, I'm so busy. Never do we hear the answer, or rarely do we hear the answer. Oh, I'm just so relaxed. I'm just chilling. I, I'm having quality time with my kids. I, I don't really have much going on. If Satan can't make you bad, he'll try to make you busy. Did you catch that? If Satan can't make you bad, he'll try to make you busy. He'll make you doing, busy doing things that may not really matter all that much. Things that aren't the important things. So how are you doing? I'm busy. We actually have time, and you've heard this, for what we choose to have time for. Anytime I'm saying, I wish I had time to do such and such, the problem is I'm actually choosing one thing over another in order to, you know, I'm choosing what I'm doing. I choose, today's topic is I choose the important over the urgent. Now, I got to get this into my head and into your heads. I've been working on it. Give you a little time to work on it. It seems like the urgent would be higher level than the important. But let's flip-flop those today and make the important a higher level than the urgent. Because you see, urgent things aren't always all that important. There's a difference. Let me give you an example. If, if you are a business owner and you've got an angry, upset customer, dealing with that customer is urgent. But if that's all you ever do is deal with angry customers, you're, doing the, you're taking care of the urgent, you're putting out the little fires, but you're not doing the important thing, and that is figure out why your customers are getting upset and make changes. That's the important. Another example, your car engine needs repaired. Why does it need repaired? Because you never change the oil. Yeah. Okay, the urgent is, oh, now I've got to get an engine job. The important is taking care of my car on a regular basis so that I don't have this urgent problem. Another example, if you're really, really sick, and it long, you know, long story short, it's because you haven't been taking care of yourself, you didn't sleep, you're overwhelmed, you're, you're doing too much, and going to the doctor to get treatment is urgent, but taking care of your body so that you don't get sick so much is the important. A thought leader by the name of Seth Godin, G-O-D-I-N, kind of a marketing guru, said this about the difference between urgent and important. He said, if you choose what is important, you won't deal with as many things that are urgent. If you're only choosing that which is urgent, then you're not going to be faced with more things that are important it just doesn't work the other way. So if you are dealing with the important, you're going to have less urgent things happening. But dealing with the urgent things does not diminish the important things. It doesn't work both ways. Well, today we're going to look in the New Testament at the biblical example of this, and what a tremendous example I think it is, at Mary and Martha. We're going to see that Mary chooses that which is important. Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said while Martha did what many of us do. She surrendered to the urgent. If you want to follow in your own Bible or on your smartphone or pad or whatever you might have, uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Luke 10, 38 to 42. 
as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work all by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Just wanted to mention, any Sunday you come in and you want a physical Bible in hand, we have some on the back uh, little entry of that, well, it's a bar actually, but we just don't serve liquor from it. Uh, but they're back there, and if you don't have a Bible at home, take it home with you. I'm not gonna, uh, we're not gonna come after you. Uh, much better to have one at home than have it sitting here. So uh, help yourself. We can relate to someone maybe really important coming to our house to visit. Martha freaks out as many of us would, and she misses what's really, really important. Verse 40, it says, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Hey, the Son of God, Jesus the Messiah, was coming to visit. She wanted everything to be just right. So she's cooking up a storm. Martha was distracted by all the preparations that, according to the scriptures, to quote it, that had to be made. Who said they had to be made? Why wouldn't Jesus have just preferred to order out for pizza? I mean, sit here and let's enjoy our fellowship and order a pizza delivery. You know, I don't know if Domino's was available then or, or Pizza Hut or anything in first century. Maybe not. But, you know, we'll, we'll run down the street and get some gyros or heroes, depending on where you're from. And uh, just, just chill, take it easy. So she comes to Jesus and she tattles on her sister, expecting Jesus to say, yeah, get out there and help her. What are you doing sitting here listening to me? Get out, there's work to be done. And Jesus didn't do that. He didn't support her thoughts, Martha's thoughts. I wonder how many of us have been significantly, significantly distracted from what is most important. Faithfully pursuing the urgent and neglecting what is important. In your notes, if you have those uh, with your bulletin, and the scriptures, most of them are already printed in there too for you. In your notes, a big question just to deal with, what is the most important thing that you've been distracted from pursuing? And there's several lines after that, so you can write it in. What is the most important thing you've been distracted from pursuing? Let me give you some examples. Get your, your, your juices flowing there in the brain. I've been distracted maybe from spending time with Jesus, just like the one in the story. I haven't put him first. I haven't had intimate time feeding on the Bible, on his word. I, I haven't kept my heart in line with his heart. I, I've been distracted from this. Or I'm so busy doing things for my children that I haven't actually taken the time to enjoy my children. I haven't made the investment in them of my time and attention that I wanted to because I'm so busy doing their laundry and packing their lunches and taking them to 12 different lessons every week and groups and everything. Or, again, toward the parents. You've become child's, a child-centered family. And you might say, isn't that important? Well, 
your whole life revolves around your kids, and if you're married, guess who gets neglected each other? You're neglecting the relationship with the father, with the mother, with, with each other. You're neglecting the marriage that is the rock that the whole family is based upon. Of course, Jesus is the rock, but he wants us to base our lives on him. Uh, I've seen parents ignore each other, and uh, they don't even know who each other is anymore because they're not leaving the kids with somebody and going out on a date. How often did I say last week you should go out on a date? Once a week. Somebody was listening. Mark, was that you? Oh, Tom. All right. Did he take you out? No, I won't put him on the spot like that. All right. Nobody will ever answer a question again if I do. No, ah, Okay. Took my wife to a wedding yesterday. How's that? Uh, and she had dental surgery, so she didn't make the reception, but I, I had the best dance partner at that wedding, I'll tell you. I, uh, I got little Joanna Gomer, and uh, we were just all over the dance floor, and she's smiling the whole time. She never once tried to lead. I mean, it was just, per she was just with me every step of the way. It was awesome. But Martha was distracted, we get distracted, we neglect our marriage for the sake of the kids, and then the kids go off to college, and it's like, who is this stranger I'm left living with? Or I've neglected my physical body, and so I'm just waiting for that shoe to drop, and then the other shoe to drop, and all because I haven't taken care of what's important. Some of you, it would be something more internal. There's an addiction or a habit or a recurring sin that needs to be dealt with in your life. You need to get help because you've neglected it. It's really important, but you haven't dealt with it because you're too busy with the urgent. In verse 41, Jesus answers, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things. If some of us had a life verse, that would probably be it. Uh, isn't there a book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and It's All Small Stuff? I think Val had that at one point or something. I remember that. Don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. Well, there are some things that are important, but we're so busy with the small stuff, sweating the small stuff, we don't deal with what's important. Jesus went on to say, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary had cho has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. I am not sending her out to the kitchen to help co you cook. Martha surrendered to the urgent. Mary chose what was important. And if we're not intentional about this, I promise you, we're going to keep having the urgent, the urgent, the urgent, and we will be putting out one fire after another, solving one problem after another, because we're not taking some time to deal with that which is important. So let me quickly share with you three practical goals. Dana wanted me to keep you until about 12.30 this morning so they'd have time to do children's church. No, I'm just kidding. Um, he did ask for extra time, but I don't know that I can accommodate that fully. But three practical things. I like to be practical. In my counseling, I tend to be very practical. Have you tried this? Have you done this? Yeah. Uh, and in my preaching, I don't want it just to be theology. I want you to be able to take it home and put it into practice. So here's a few things. Number one, here's an idea for you. So you can do that which is important, create artificial deadlines. Well, that's not to put more pressure on yourself, but it's to get one thing done so that you can then have time to do something else. You know, if, now, my sermon does not have to be done until 11.30 on Sunday morning. That's my deadline. I am going, to, that's right, my deadline. Thank you, Riley. You're listening. You're awful cute, I'll tell you. 
<laughs> That's my deadline. But that doesn't mean I'm going to wait until 10 o'clock on Sunday morning to start my sermon because, hey, I've got an hour and a half and I can run in partway through the service and preach it. Well, it might be fresh on my mind, but that's not going to work, and it's not going to happen. So I like to have the sermon done Wednesday. I mean, I don't set that as a hard deadline, but a couple weeks ago, two weeks in a row, I think I had the whole sermon, the PowerPoint, everything was done by Wednesday. And it's like, huh. Wonder what's going to happen. I, I take Thursdays off. I wonder what's going to happen on Friday that's urgent that I'm going to have to take care of. But God has helped me to get this have to that I want to done so that there's time for something else. So here's how it really works. In your own life, you can apply this. For example, you know that if you're leaving for somewhere on Thursday morning, you do the work that you normally do in five days a week around the house and everything. You get it all done. You organize it. You get it done. And by Thursday morning, it's all done and you leave. Well, what if you did that more regularly so that you had time left over? What if you delegated some things that you should not be doing, including to your kids? What if you say no to things that you should not be doing? And we'll talk more about that in point three. Third, make faster decisions all day long. That's where I can get into trouble. Making the decisions too slowly. By the time I finally make a decision, I've spent a lot of time on making that decision. And I think it's probably the right one, but I could have made that decision a whole lot more quickly. So set a time limit for a project. This is another way to look at it, and I have tried this. You have something that is urgent that needs to be done, or you think it's urgent. You know, ironing your sheets and your underwear. It's not all that urgent anymore. But you have something that will set a time limit. The house needs cleaned. All right, we'll give it 35 minutes and then set the timer and move on to spend time with your kids. All right, just give it a little block of time, give it an hour, and then you have time for that which is really important. Second practical idea. Oh, this is the one I thought was number three. Be ruthlessly selective in your yeses. Be ruthlessly selective in your yeses. Be very careful. Be very prayerful about what you say yes to. For most people today, the barrier to a meaningful life is not a lack of commitment. It is overcommitment. Busyness does not necessarily equal productivity. Busyness does not necessarily equate with meaning in life. Busyness does not necessarily equal fulfillment in life. Now here's a radical idea. Start a don't do list. You heard me. I didn't say start a to do list. I said start a don't do list. Don't do list. Uh, I no longer do these things. Uh, successful people are strategic and say no to good opportunities all the time. Why? So they can say yes to the best opportunities. No to the good, yes to the best. The best leaders do not do more. They do more of what matters most. The best moms don't do more. The best Best moms do more of what matters most. The best teachers don't do more. They invest their energy in what matters most. The best followers of Jesus don't do more and more. They do more of what brings glory to God. The best do not do more. They do more of what matters, what matters most. 
So if you want to have a more meaningful life, I would encourage you to say no to more and yes to more of, of what really matters most in your life. Now, preacher, don't you have all these things in church you want us to do? Yeah. Only if God calls you to do it. You know, we took on this, uh, this ministry to the Springfield School, and I think it's a fantastic opportunity. And, and I mentioned to Tanya in our emailing back and forth, and to Dana, I really hope that you know, maybe some of the newer people and some who are not heavily involved already in the church will step up and, uh, and, and do something here. And Brent and Michelle back there were the first ones to contact me. And uh, that was awesome. I was, I was so excited. I mean, I was, whoo, all right. Because I, I knew that's what God wanted to do. Wayne and Ramona contacted me and said, we, wanna, we can help out too. So uh, we can still use a few more. Um, could really use a truck to go get the food or a van of some sort. Uh, the bigger space we have here and the bigger the vehicle, we can get it once a month for the whole month if, if we have space for it all. So let me know if you're looking to get involved in feeding the hungry. Third, we're going to do first what matters most. Do first what matters most. Time with Jesus matters. That's the big lesson today. If you're going to walk home with something, drive home with something, time with Jesus matters most. Mary has chosen what is better. Time at the feet of the master and Jesus said, and it will not, I will not take it away from her. Example. not having time to be with Jesus because we are so busy doing for Jesus, for the church. I have to watch as pastor that I don't get busy doing the work of the pastor and don't take care of my own soul. Being is more important to me than doing and it is for you as well. We need to choose Jesus every day and have him be the priority of our heart. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this other stuff will be added to you as well. All too often we're seeking everything else and wonder why we don't have a life that is meaningful. We need to seek him first every day realigning our life with his life, make sure they resemble, reflect each other, that we reflect him. Our priorities need to go on the calendar first. Our priorities, how many of you keep a calendar? You write down your appointments. Some of you have such tremendous minds that you don't need to do that. I have discovered through our phones that Carol has access to my calendar all the time. Did a Google Calendar online, tied it in with that, and if she's making an appointment, I see it. If I'm making an appointment, she sees it. Hardly ever need to talk to her anymore. No, I'm <laughs> just... <laughs> no, I love talking to my wife. More important is to listen to our wives, though. But this sermon isn't about marriage, but that's, that's a freebie. You don't have to pay me for that one. Date night. Do I always do it? No. Put it on the calendar. Somebody says, oh, can you do such and such on Friday night? No, I have a commitment. Now, when I tell you I have a commitment, you might be wondering, is he just taking his wife out on a date? No, I'm not just taking my wife out on a date. I am investing in a 40 plus year relationship. And that's more important than a lot of other things. So what are you going to choose? The urgent? 
or the important. Remember, when we do more of what is important, we're going to have fewer and fewer urgent things that we have to deal with, but the opposite is never true. When having somebody over to the house, what if we chose the importance of the person rather than the urgent of how good the house looks? Just saying. I think a lot of times we don't even have somebody over to the house, and I know that's not everybody's thing. I understand that. I get it. But, oh, man, when am I going to have time to make everything sparkle? When am I going to have time to clean? Oh, I don't. I guess I can't have them over. We had good friends uh, in our Monroeville church, my, our first church, that when you went to the Tisk, no, it was the, uh, yeah, anyway, the other family. Uh, we had two in the, ch no, we had more than that. Uh, Fusus, yes, Fusus. Uh, oh, my word, could she cook. You know, cream puffs, and oh, my goodness. We loved going to their place. But you see, they didn't wait until the house was all picked up before they invited us and other people over. Come on over. And the laundry basket was sitting there, and you were able to just sit down and plop your feet up on the coffee table because it was like a trunk or something, so you weren't going to mar it. It was great. They worked on what was important. Relationships were more important than what we thought of their house. And hey, if somebody can't deal with that when they come to your house, they don't need to come back, right? <laughs> this is us. You know, yeah, you, you pick up last month's food off the floor and stuff like that maybe, but yeah, yeah, you know, it's like people are more important than house. The house doesn't have to be perfect, but let's invest in people. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. You and I have a choice, lots of them. We have time to do what we choose to do. You can make excuses or you can make progress, but you cannot make both. That's a good quote. I didn't write it. You can make excuses or you can make progress, but you cannot make both. Martha, distracted by all sorts of urgent things. Mary chose what was important, and it will never be taken from her. That's why with the help of Jesus, we choose him every single day. And we choose the important over the urgent. Let's have the instrumentalists come, and we're going to sing the last song. I'd leave it out, but Christy said, well, that's one of my favorites. So we got I got to do it. Got to do it. She'll hit me if I don't. So. I hope that in this series of messages, and, and I like to give credit where credit is due, the videos and everything, lifechurch.tv, some tremendous material that's available. Um, their mission as an organization is to make free stuff available to churches, everything available to churches, music, uh, videos, the U version of the Bible that you can download onto your phone. It's totally free. You can choose the language. You can, If you want it in Scandinavian or something, you can probably get it. If you uh, want it in uh, you know, whatever version you prefer, you can find it, I bet. Uh, those of you who have little ones, check out their children's Bible app. Uh, I can't remember the name of it exactly right now, but I can get that for you. But uh, the version has a children's Bible app where it goes through the stories of the Bible, and they've done quite a few of them now. Uh, well done, well done. Let's stand as we sing it.
with 22 people and then you're free to go home. <laughs> All right, we'll see who does it now. Dear Heavenly Father, it is so good to be together as the family of God and in your house. We pray that you will go with us. May we make wise choices, especially the choice to put you first, to make you most important in our life. Show us those areas where we've been neglecting the important, those things that really matter to us, that thing that we wrote down in the sermon notes. Maybe there's something else that you're going to show to us this week and help us to make the changes that we need to make so that we are doing the important and not just running to the urgent all the time. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, 27 people. Ha, ha, ha.